Welcome to Declassifying the Paranormal. Here we reveal the secrets that sinister organizations attempt to conceal from the world, objects and entities that could shape the very foundations of what we think is, and is not, possible. Today we have secured documents belonging to the SCP Foundation, and will reveal to you the nature of SCP-1836. Item Number, SCP-1836 Object Class, Euclid Special Containment Procedures, SCP-1836 is to be recontained. See Incident Report 110-614 for full account of containment breach, within Site 641 which is disguised as an active ecological research station and wildlife preserve at N74.13-W93.81, encompassing the entirety of the Cunningham Inlet. The research station is to be staffed with a full-time research team and support staff including a classically trained Ongakuk, Shaman of the Aleut, Yukpik or Inupiat peoples, and a certified cosmetologist, amended by request of the on-site Shaman. A 50 kilometers radius of protected waters is to be maintained around the site. These waters are to be patrolled by armed foundation assets disguised as research personnel or environmental activist elements. Trespassers are to be interrogated, administered level C amnestics and released in the nearest settlement. An access causeway is to be maintained into one of the caves that perforate SCP-1836. Access to the causeway is restricted to the site director, on-site shaman and cosmetologist. Additional personnel may be permitted by majority consensus of the personnel with access or by direct request of relevant level 4 personnel. In the event of hostile SCP-1836 activity the staff shaman and cosmetologist are to enter SCP-1836 using the causeway and enact the helping hands protocol. See attached reference document DH-447. In the event of failure Foundation personnel are to fall back and observe SCP-1836 until it enters its inactive state, at which time they are to mobilize MTF-89E Thomas's tuggers to tow SCP-1836 back to Site-641. Update. The Helping Hands protocol has been found to have variable effectiveness. To date, the protocol has failed on several occasions to completely quell SCP-1836. Outbursts have occurred causing three fatalities and 12 injuries, necessitating refilling of key staff positions. In order to maintain containment the on-site shaman has been given wide discretion in regard to the appropriate ritualistic tact to take when SCP-1836 becomes hostile. Subject to review by the site director, see addendum. Additional resources have been made available to facilitate containment. Please consult the on-site requisition office for further details. Update, following the incidents of H, dash H, dash H, no birds are to be allowed to enter proximity with SCP-1836 during the Helping Hands protocol. All birds roosting on the gravel bar, on SCP-1836 or within a 30-meter radius are to be chased off or exterminated. Birds exterminated in this way will be handed over to the on-site shaman for appropriate ritualistic disposal. Description, SCP-1836 is a green, non-tabular, pinnacle iceberg peaking 90 meters above the surface, approximately 123 meters in length. It is estimated to weigh between 150,000 and 175,000 metric tons and extends approximately 450 meters below the surface. Submersible surveys of the SCP-1836 have revealed many large tunnels extending into the object. Aside from coloration the object appears to be an ordinary iceberg. Core samples have revealed that the iceberg is composed of ordinary ice. Algae and trapped within the ice give the object its unusual coloration. SCP-1836-1 is a pod of mammalian organisms of the order Cetacea that are housed within SCP-1836. The pod is composed of several different species with fluctuating composition and number. Thus far all species within the pod have been extinct, tooth cetaceans. The cause of these changes in the pod's composition are unknown. To date the pod has included specimens tentatively identified as members of the Bacillus oridae, Ambulus edidae, Acrophis eater, and Urinodelphinidae. Recently Lipotes vexillifer has been cited during SCP-1836 activity. The mechanism by which interspecies communication is facilitated between pod members is currently under investigation. The anomalous properties of the object manifest when marine mammals are hunted at sea or on the shoreline by any people who are not of Aleut, 
Yupik or Inupiat ethnicity, within a 50 km radius of the object, SCP-1836 will begin to accelerate toward the hunt until the object reaches a speed of 35 knots. At this point the hunted mammal or mammals, now designated SCP-1836-2, will change bearing to head directly toward SCP-1836. If underwater topography makes this impossible, SCP-1836-2 will adopt the most efficient course to bring it within proximity of SCP-1836. If SCP-1836-2 reaches SCP-1836 before being overtaken, SCP-1836-2 will place the object between itself and the hunters. As SCP-1836 is strictly ocean-going, it can take no further action against landbound hunters. If the hunter or hunters continue pursuing SCP-1836-2 in an ocean-going vessel, however, SCP-1836 will proceed to ram the hunting vessel until it breaches the hull. It will then extrude part of itself into the hull breach and expand, widening the breach. This process will continue until the vessel becomes structurally unsound or begins to sink, at which point the extension will retract. If no marine mammals were killed or injured during the hunt, SCP-1836 will dislodge from the vessel at this point and drift away, ceasing activity. If any marine mammals were killed or injured during the hunt, however, SCP-1836 will remain in close proximity to the sinking vessel. When the hunters evacuate the sinking vessel, between 5 and 30 instances of SCP-1836-1 will emerge from the submerged portions of SCP-1836 and engage the hunters, dragging them into the submerged caverns within SCP-1836. The fate of these individuals is a matter of ongoing investigation. Expeditions into SCP-1836 are pending approval. Update. After a brief expedition into the interior of SCP-1836 a small central chamber was discovered. Within the walls of this chamber is the frozen, well-preserved, corpse of a young woman of Inupiat ethnicity. The corpse had suffered injuries in the past and is missing its hands at the wrist. Only the head of the corpse is exposed to the open air. Due to safety concerns only the on-site shaman and cosmetologist are to have access to this chamber. Addendum Interviewer, Agent Scout Full Brush Interviewed, Terry Akla Chatelier, on-site shaman Forward, following hostile activity by SCP-1836 on H-H-H-H, Terry Akla Chatelier was called to begin the Helping Hand Protocol. After 80 minutes had elapsed SCP-1836 ceased activity and Le Chatelier emerged from SCP-1836 with injuries reminiscent of prolonged exposure to the elements and several bite marks consistent with human and dolphin jaw architecture on his extremities. He provided the following debriefing to Agent Fullbrush after receiving medical attention. Begin log. All right, we're recording. Size. Let's begin then. For the record, Agent Fullbrush debriefing Tirac Le Chatelier. It's Terriac. We've known each other for a year now. I'm sorry. Muffled, it's fine just, inaudible. Right, can you tell me what happened on dash dash What? Yesterday afternoon. Yesterday she just got a little mad at me is all. I'm terrible with a comb and I tugged too hard and she nipped me a bit. It's her way. Can you elaborate? Sure, every once in a while the ivory comb gets stuck after I've burned the incense and dabbed her with sacred oil. I don't know how her hair manages to get so entangled since she's usually just sitting there. When you say stuck stuck. Like, when I comb her hair inside that frozen living room of hers sometimes it comes to a knot and it gets caught. Do you comb your own hair, full brush? It works like that. If I tug too hard on my own, that's no big deal, but I tug on her hair and sometimes I get nipped because, let's face it, I don't know what to do with that much hair and she's a sensitive lady. How do you normally cope with SCP-1836 when it reacts that way to your ritual? A. Depends on her mood. Sometimes I step back and wait her out. 
Sometimes I have to sing a little something, burn a different incense, offer a sled dog. Sometimes she just wants me to leave, I think that I'm coming as a man into her house is disconcerting. Usually when you placate her you are supposed to look like a fish or send a fish with the comb in your stead. Right, is there anything the foundation could do to improve your ability to control SCP-1836? No. There's nothing you can do to improve control but you people just don't like listening to that. So then. Interrupting, you can help by giving me another pair of hands to help me out, preferably one who knows how to deal with long, ladies, hair. Get me a hairdresser. Oh, and untie my hands with pre-ritual preparations. Not every one of her outbursts is the same. She's got feelings even if she isn't willing to tell you Holonart because you can't be bothered to learn how. So formally you'd like to request an assistant with hair care experience in greater operational latitude? Yes. That sounds about right. Pause, I'll get the paperwork. We'll see what happens. End blog. Incident report, 110-614. Date. Slash A. Slash A. 13. Location. Site 641. Description. On H. Slash H. Slash H. 13 SCP-1836 broke containment. During a routine implementation of the Helping Hands protocol, the on-site shaman, Terry Akla Chatelier, was interrupted by an unknown party during his procedure. The following is a summary of the video surveillance footage taken by the observation post. 0 o'clock SCP-1836 is immobile, resting against the gravel bar. The sea is calm and the aviary fence is in place. 005 The water around SCP-1836 begins to churn. A layer of green ice curls into swirling patterns. SCP-1836 has entered its active state. 007 Structural deformations appear on the surface of SCP-1836. SCP-1836 appears to be attempting to withdraw from the gravel bar. 015 Terry Akla Chatelier arrives and begins pre-entry preparations accompanied by Lydia O'Foot, on-site cosmetologist. After 10 minutes of preparation and burning of incense they enter SCP-1836. 032 Unusual cloud formation detected by perimeter defense assets. Site 641 is placed on emergency weather alert. Ambient temperature falls from 15 degrees Celsius to minus 4 degrees Celsius. No warnings have been issued by local weather services. SCP-1836 slows its motion. Observation post receives a short radio message indicating that the Helping Hands protocol is underway and will come SCP-1836 shortly. 056 Foundation Perimeter Hydrophones Detect Elevated Whale Song Levels Analysis by staff marine biologists indicates that the song is not associated with mating or feeding behaviors. 123 Le Chatelier and O'Foot have not yet emerged from SCP-1836. Radio contact indicates that the Helping Hands protocol is still ongoing. 130 The unusual cloud formation includes the airspace over Site 641 and stops moving with prevailing winds. Closer inspection reveals that the cloud formation is a flock composed entirely of northern Fulmer, Fulmerus glacialis. The flock descends and begin to harass site staff. The high concentration of Fulmer make it impossible for staff to conduct outdoor activities. Staff are ordered indoors. The Fulmer make no attempt to break into site facilities with the exception of the aviary fence, which is attacked by the flock. SCP-1836 violently lists and jostles during this time. 134 repeated attempts to contact Le Chatelier and O'Foot have failed. SCP-1836 displays more agitation and is deforming in a manner consistent with an attack on a ship. It is postulated that SCP-1836 is attempting to breach the aviary cage and engage the Fulmer. The aviary cage is under continuous assault by the flock during this time. 219 site security efforts to drive off the flock have failed. Security staff attempt to keep the aviary fence clear using small arms fire, signal flares, and noise deterrence. None of these are effective. 
the extermination of individual members of the flock is not significant in regard to the total population. 243 A hole in the aviary fence allows a wave of fulmer to breach containment. They swarm the interior of the fence. A single large toothed, pelican-like bird of unknown species lands on the gravel bar and metamorphoses into a humanoid figure wearing local, traditional garments. This figure is briefly seen darting up the catwalk before the camera is obscured by birds. 317 A loud, groaning sound consistent with glacial calving is emitted by SCP-1836. The iceberg shudders and wrenches free of the gravel bar. SCP-1836 proceeds to ram the aviary cage. 320 Le Chatelier and Afoot are violently expelled from the entrance causeway. Both are unconscious and demonstrate defensive wounds, frostbite and bite marks. 322 SCP-1836 breaks through the aviary cage and begins to move into open water. Foundation MTF-89E is mobilized to recontain SCP-1836. 340 SCP-1836 enters the Barrow Strait and begins moving west. MTF-89E is in pursuit. 450 MTF-89E is harried by flocks of fulmer and by contact with hostile cetaceans. After one of MTF-89E's vessels is nearly capsized, Site Director Park issues a retreat to regroup and reassess. Forward, after SCP-1836 breached containment, Le Chatelier and Afoot were rushed to the infirmary. Le Chatelier suffered several deep, puncture wounds to his center of mass. On autopsy, it was revealed that Le Chatelier's chest <laughs> the inside. Ofoot suffered minor defensive wounds and small injuries consistent with exposure to sub-freezing temperatures. The following is a transcript of her debriefing. Interviewer, Agent Scout Full Brush. Interviewed, Lydia Ofoot. Right, let's begin. Can you please state your name and ID number for the record? Ofoot, Lydia Ofoot. 0894-643764-348711-0 Nervous laugh, hairdresser to the gods. Hey, funny. Pause, can you describe to me what happened yesterday? Offut, I don't know where to start. Begin at the beginning. What happened when you and Le Chatelier went inside? Offut. Well, T had just finished the pre-ritual stuff. You know the incense seal blubber, all this talk of being clean. We hiked on up inside and I started combing her hair like usual. Then things got weirder. In what way? Off foot. At first I thought it was just T being paranoid. He kept on asking me if I was doing anything differently and I told him no, I'm brushing and trimming like I always do. I tell him that I'm not pulling any knots and that her hair is just fine, that it's something else maybe. Pause. I know this is hard to talk about but please continue. Offut, I don't really know. I'm just a hairdresser. Did Le Chatelier say or do anything unusual before you were interrupted? Offut, I remember T saying something about how she wouldn't stop talking about her husband. Her ex-husband. Something about a restraining order and coming to visit? Time doesn't pass right inside there. Anyway, I remember the room shaking and she started shrieking something fierce, like I had pulled on her too hard. I got pushed away and slipped on the ice. That's when things got worse. Our surveillance indicates that something walked up into SCP-1836 during the incident outside. Is that what you're talking about? Offut. Yeah, I saw this person in mucklucks and a parka come in. They threw, literally threw, T aside and stabbed him with little bird feet, claws, hidden up inside his sleeves. There wasn't any blood, I don't know how the T didn't bleed. He just fell, laid there. The guy who, who killed T walked up to her and started talking. What did he say? Offa, he said that he knew he wasn't supposed to talk to her anymore that he was sorry to disturb her. He said something like, even though we're divorced, I still care about you and I couldn't let them keep you away from your children. Then what happened? Offut. He said something about T being a traitor to the art. Roughed me up a bit. Said I was good at my job. Said that I was good enough to her to avoid what happened to T. He tossed us out. 
I bumped my head on the catwalk and everything went gray. I came to in the infirmary. Is there anything else you remember, anything important? Offoot, I don't know. That man. That man was so strange and so angry. He kept talking about jailers and injustice. When he cut me he called it a snake bite but said something about having no poison. Fuck. I honestly don't know if that's important or not. Pause. We can continue this later if you like. Give you some more time to deal with it. Offoot, I'd like that. It's just a lot to chew. T was a kind soul, a good friend. End recording. Thank you for tuning in. We hope that you enjoyed this broadcast. If you did please subscribe, like and share it around. If you have any particular case files you'd like us to cover in future broadcasts leave a comment below and we'll get around to it shortly. Tune in again tomorrow for more revelations.